we doing today? What's the big picture? We've got this mural and this is my mood board. So you can see here we've got the colours of the splashback in there, if you can see that, Rosie. And then our outdoor out here, see all the colours, right? And then of course we've got our Hames Artisan in the um, slate stone um, brushed and our mural. At the moment I'm projecting it. So one of the ways to not get confused with so many lines and so much detail in a scene like this is to go through after you've drawn it and put on your highlights and your shadows, right? And then once you're nice and confident of where everything is in the space, turn the projector off. And then just nice and fast, go through it and sh -sh -sh -sh, paint all the areas in. Otherwise, it's very easy to become bogged down in, oh, that's there and that's there and that's there, and trying to copy. And you never want to just be doing a straight copy with art. It should always come from the heart and from your subconscious and you just, you just go. So if ever you decide to start painting with the projector on, just remember what old Shazzy said. Doo -doo -doo. Watch out. So all I'm doing with my shadows, you see I've got a nice big brush, right? Nothing precious here. And... Imagine that the light is coming from behind, therefore the shadow is on the other side of each tree trunk. Yeah? And just going through in the texture of our bark. There it carries through. Um, and just looking around to where some of those darker areas are. We've got our horizontals because there's a creek here. There's another one there. Got a bucket or something up there so it's blocking it out but you know get the general story and the faster you go the better it is uh, over there as well this is going to go up to grasses and in my colour, I've got my shadow colour, which is our purple. I've got our bark colour, which is our reddy brown. And then a bit of black and white in there. So it's a nice sort of muted um, violet. One of the other tricks is with the brush, just to make sure you've always got enough paint. Because we don't want a dry brush on here. I like um, nice sort of clean, yeah, not too textural shadows. And it's okay to go over at the moment the colour's a little bit lighter. That's okay. Just always remember where your light's coming from. step ladder like one of these non-slip step ladder nice and handy and also you know when you're doing trees like this that the light is going to hit and maybe you won't see this area you'll see you know foliage over the top of that so you don't have to go through and get everything absolutely perfect Areas. You can imagine that there's little tiny branches up here and again try to keep those lines nice and crisp. Probably swap over to a smaller brush. What do I think about when I'm painting and how do I balance all the colour and everything on this sort of job? Um, and the answer is there's only one source of light, right? So that's kind of a given. Oh, sorry, Fredo. The light is kind of down here and it's radiating up and down, right? And meanwhile, we've got all these trees and 
obviously the light is from behind the tree. So you just have to picture in your head, or as I'm painting, I'm picturing in my head, where the light is hitting. So you sort of imagine, create a movie in your mind, where's the light hitting? I'm going, okay, it's streaming through, streaming, 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 it's going to hit there. And then streaming, 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 and this is going back in space, and it's going to hit here, right? And it'll hit on this bit that's sort of poking out, it's facing this way, and then it's going to hit there, it's going to hit there. And I'll look for little areas, so if you see, like in this area, you can see we've got our, our shadows, and then the intermediate shadows, which are called penumbra, so this is umbra, this is penumbra, and then you've got your highlights. So where's the light going to hit? It's going to hit on the lighter part. And that is where I would put a little highlight. Now, if I'm thinking my light is yellow and I'm being a little bit funky like I am in this artwork, then I'll do a yellow highlight. If I were being realistic, like in this artwork, you can see that the colours are more realistic. And over here we've got our highlights, right? It's the same colour light. I haven't gone to a different colour. So if I'm funking something up, like here, then I've got, you know, like yellow highlights rather than a more sort of pinky bluey highlight. Depends on what I'm going to try to achieve. But it's art. Do what you want. Have fun with it. As long as it feels like, wow, I am in this world and I can just walk through it and I really enjoy it, then that's all that it's about, you know? That's it. So a lot of, um, a lot of people say, how do you create an illusion of space? And here it is. As you go back in space, everything can get a little bit blurry. Yeah. Also, lines and shapes will all get closer together and smaller and then lighter, right? So see how we got smaller shapes here, but we've got much bigger shapes down here. See how all the horizontal lines are all further apart. And as we're going further away, they're getting closer and closer together. So that's basically the rule of thumb there. How to create an illusion of distance. A little bit more about creating that illusion of space and when you're looking say through a forest like this, out through trees to sky, right? It's very easy to get bogged down into painting little leaves and being really figurative and uh, yeah, getting stuck. Whereas really all you gotta do is say pick your sky colour and then the colour of the forest that is uh, infused of light, this colour, there's a sky colour, and then blend them in together in a nice fuzzy, there it is, really fast, mottled way, look at that, really fast, and then down here. And see how it's like, um, you can see how it is land and you can look through and into it. Got me? And so if I want to even bring it further towards us, now I'm going to get that colour and just soften it. Because remember, to create something that's far away, it's blurred. There we are. And now let's grab a little bit of our greenery. Throw that on there. Ah, now it's going to happen. Right. This is called tinging. When you take one colour and you blend it, you tinge it with another. So just tinge those. Down the side there, because we don't want any white paint down there. And scrub, 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 scrub. And a bit more. Now, if 
if I go darker all of a sudden. So yeah, suddenly now we're getting much closer to the viewer. Now let's create a little bit of shadow. Fill all that in. Okay, let's go to some. Let's create a little bit of area. Get darker. Okay, dark green. Add that in there. Trunk. And the faster you go, the better. Okay, now pick up on these shapes of the brushes left behind. Look in there. Look in there. And now I'm going to grab. My shadow colour, which is my violet, and I'm going to put it right in there. And because it's still wet, let it blend in with the green. Don't forget that we are under the trees, right? So it's going to be darker. And now we're going to tinge again. Grab our green, we've still got the blue violet on the brush, and bring those two in a tinge. And then, if I want to, I can get my red violet. And do my funky bits. Give it a look. Just get the rest out. And essentially, that is how it's done. So now you're looking right into a space. How about that? I emerge. I don't use blacks. Very rarely. I'll grab my two darkest colours, whatever they are. In this instance, it's a, uh, a green and a violet. And I've got this nice colour here. And so if I want to create deep shadow, I'm going to put that in there. Maybe back in there. bit deeper again yes I could put in a little black or a little bit of red um, but I tend to put in my true black right at the very end just as punches it's very easy to overdo it okay so let's do a deep shadow down in here so just follow there we do trick too is to squint your eyes guys like you can't see squint right and what it does is it helps you mm, contrast the the dark and the light colors and also to sort of see um, what isn't looking good it'll tend to pop out really quickly similarly if I'm decorating and I'm trying to get a client to see say a cushion right or a certain color in a space the space is over there and I've got this thing here and I'm saying can't you see that in that space no well 
close one eye, right? I'll hold that up. And your brain will marry the two together. So it's just like seeing it in that space. This little freaky thing that our body does. Very cool. <laughs> Being old and decrepit. Oh, there you are. I'm almost done. Look at that. So what are we on? Day three. God, I mean, a fog of fatigue, I can't think. Really. And that's just the life of being an artist. Steve was saying today, our client, so what's it like when you're doing a great big job like this, right? Um, and what part is your favourite? Well, the favourite part is coming up with the idea and you get those little goosebumps on your on your back. I love that. Um, and then you design it and you project it on and you, and you start. And it's like, it's really exciting. And that's like day one. And then day two, pain, 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 it's hard work. And then day three, it's like, when is this going to end? And by day four, you're cool. Because <laughs> you're just tired. And then your eyes start going. And you can't think, is that first or is that first? As in, you know, where's the highlight and, and where's the midtone, where's the shadow? Because your brain just starts to blow everything in together. So it, um, it's hard work being an artist, you know? And I think everyone glamorises it. Uh, and, and it is great. You're doing what you love, but it's still really hard work. Yeah? And then you're going up and down ladders. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Because you've got to get through all this stuff all the time. So, don't go into being a professional artist if you're lazy. <laughs> no. Woohoo! Finished! So excited. So, check it out. Four days on site here at uh, Steve and Trisha's um, Painting This Mural. It's actually inspired by a photo from another client of mine years ago um, from a uh, a national park that they love called Fiordland in the south of New Zealand. And uh, that client and I painted this um, oil painting over a day. And uh, Trish and Steve saw it and went, oh, we love that. So, you know, here we've gone and find some different colors, sort of similar style, but here is Fiordland. And um, I've got a real gorgeous sense of light coming all the way through and hits these trees. And comes down here and hits the, the sand bank. It reminds me a lot of, you know, the, the art of Gauguin. You know about Gauguin? Um, sort of what was the early 1910s, I guess. He was one of the best friends of Vincent van Gogh. The guy who took off, left his wife and family and went to live in Tahiti and, you know, paint Tahitian broads. That guy, if you've ever heard of him. So it's all the treatment of the colour there. And... Um, it reminds me too of when I was a kid and mum and dad used to take us to one of the country creeks with a big uh, insert from a tyre and we'd you know, jump on those tyre inserts and just float off down the creek. All the beautiful light. It reminds me of that. So yeah, years of um, enjoyment here for Trish and Steve and uh, I'm pretty happy with this. Hmm.